Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. Wow! What can one say but wow? The nations which are in the four corners of the earth. That's all nations, isn't it? It is further confirmed by the phrase, whose number is as the sand of the sea. Wow, that is a lot of people. Satan gathers them together to battle. And yes, like other things in Revelation, our foolish imagination tries to stamp this description as literal. But we cannot, for there are presently more than 8 billion people in these nations. So the idea of gathering them together has nothing to do with the physical and everything to do with the spiritual and psychological gathering taking place in the hearts and minds of the masses. The difference can be noted in the following. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Do you see the difference indicated by the spirit of the world and the spirit who is from God? Look at what Paul follows with. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I think it's safe to say that the spirit of the world denotes the natural person, while the spirit who is from God denotes the spiritual person. The first, based on the pride of the self, leads to carnality, while the second, based on the love and grace of our Creator, leads to a transformation and spirituality. Now forgive me, but I must ask, who is Gog and Magog? Many have sought to guess, and maybe I'm just foolish for thinking so, but doesn't the context define them as the nations which are in the four corners of the earth? So it's not Russia or China, nor does it have anything to do with any nation in particular. Rather, it has everything to do with all nations and again, where we stand in our hearts and minds. The true Armageddon is between our ears. Now, let's consider what follows Revelation 28. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Is this literal? How could it be? It's physically impossible for all nations to surround the camp of the saints in the beloved city, unless, unless we're talking about the mindset of the world as opposed to the mindset of Christ. And the fire? If this is literal, is our heavenly father going to physically consume almost 8 billion souls and cast them into eternal torment? That's ludicrous. Instead, might the fire that comes down from God out of heaven point to the lake of fire or second death or message of the cross? For more on the lake of fire, see my video study, What is the Lake of Fire? on this YouTube channel. There's nothing unusual about the mindset of the world pressing against us, especially now when social media plays such a large part in our lives. Isn't that the real battle? struggling against the way of thinking that negates self-sacrifice for the sake of instant gratification or humility for the sake of pride? The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Here we see the devil cast into the lake of fire and brimstone this is, of course, the lake of fire and or second death mentioned in Revelation 2, 11, 
26, 2014, and 21.8. Note that the beast and false prophet are already there. And when we get to Revelation 20.14, we find that death and Hades are also cast into this lake. First, the beast and the false prophet, or carnal nature that has been formed from our own deceptive heart. Then the devil, that accusatory spirit that seeks to justify our love for the self by maligning others. Finally, death and Hades itself, eradicated by the transformation of our minds from carnal to spiritual. And the catalyst for this change, the lake of fire or message of the cross, the message of unconditional love and self-sacrifice. This is the torment or touchstone or criteria by which all of us are judged. This is why anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, not because we are tortured for our wrongful deeds long after this life, but because we are challenged by his unrelenting love and grace every single day and every single time we act out of selfishness. Light torments darkness and unrelenting love torments our lack of it. Do not be deceived, my friend. God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we reap. This is our judgment. Now, in this life, and again, the criteria for this judgment is the message of the cross. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Here we are, the great white throne. Why is it white? Because it denotes righteousness and purity. And the context is clear. This is about judgment. What does John record? I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. Compare this to what John saw in Revelation, chapter 7. I don't believe these books are personal diaries outlining every single deed we've ever committed. However, in keeping with the divine principle of sowing and reaping, we are judged according to our works. When? In this life where we reap what we sow. So what are these books? Might they be the 66 books of the Bible? And based on the context, don't these books include the other book that is opened, that is, the book of life? It does, and I believe this book is first seen in the following. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. What is this book or scroll in the right hand of the Father? Is it not the book of life? And the fact that it contains seven seals reveals that the fullness and manifestation of this book is just that, life. No wonder John wept much, for he recognized that this seven-sealed book contained a divine purpose for all mankind, one that would lead to a new heaven and a new earth. When we are willing to put aside the traditional view, it's easy to see that everything recorded in Revelation 20 is a present reality, not something yet to come. What the Lord accomplished 2,000 years ago set all of this in motion and it will end in life.